Hi, welcome to the show. Thanks for being with us today. There are accounts of God speaking in the Bible as early as Genesis. In the book of Exodus, the Lord spoke to Moses through a burning bush. And a lot of Christians today would say they do hear the voice of the Lord. That's right. So what does the Lord sound like? It's a great question. And is it always audible? Another great question. So Kathy on Facebook asked, people say they hear God talking to them. Do they actually hear a voice? Is it more of a feeling? I long to converse with God. How does it work? It is a great question. Yeah. <clears throat> and her saying, I long to converse with God. Mm -hmm. I think the Lord will respond to that. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, Ashley, you'll agree with this. And you probably know this already. The primary way the Lord communicates to us is through Scripture, without question. Yeah. Certainly in my life, mm -hmm. I have felt the Lord, heard the Lord speak to me through the Word of God. There is no better way to hear from God directly mm -hmm. than the Word of God itself. Yeah. And the voice of God will never go against scripture. So that's another yeah. way to differentiate. Okay, am I, am I hearing something else? Is it my own thoughts or is it the Lord? If the Lord speaks something, it should uphold what scripture yeah. says. You know, one of the great things about reading the word, this doesn't happen to me all the time, but many times if I'm disciplining myself, putting time aside for God, like I wanna hear from you, yes. please hear my prayer. There's an account in scripture after Jesus uh, is risen from the tomb and he meets disciples on the road and he spends time with them. They don't recognize him at first, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then he reveals himself and they say, yeah. didn't our hearts burn within us yeah. when he spoke with us and revealed scripture? You yeah. can experience your heart burning. The Holy Spirit can do yeah. something mighty. Now that doesn't happen every time yeah. we're in the word, but um, you know, sometimes we read about Elijah hearing the still small voice of God. Exactly. What do you think about, yeah. you know, she asked, is it a feeling sometimes? I think, I think yes. I mean, ultimately, he, here's the thing. Like, if you are a born-again believer, that means you've asked Jesus to come into your heart to forgive you of your sins. He now lives inside of you. His Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Jesus told his disciples, look, it's a good thing that I go away so that the advocate can come into you. You know, we think of Pentecost. That's when the Spirit of God came and then is here. It's, it's within us all. So, don't doubt, if you're a born again believer, don't doubt that God isn't inside of you because he is. You know, um, how you can really get to know and get used to hearing the voice of God is spending time with him. His sheep yeah. hear, understand his voice. Yeah. You know, Jesus said, my sheep will understand, recognize my voice. And it makes mm -hmm. sense what you say. You know, if we're the temple of, of uh, the, the Lord, yeah. the Holy Spirit resides in us, you know. Exactly. And it's, is it a feeling? Is it a voice? Um, you know, it says in, in Matthew 4, I believe it, it was, that Jesus was led into the wilderness to be mm -hmm. tempted. Mm -hmm. It was a leading, and I think that's a good word for us. There's a certain leading that happens Absolutely. when the Lord speaks to us. Yeah. You know, I've talked before on the show, I won't get into detail now, but um, my father was not a believer, but mm. as he became one, he literally heard the voice of God. He, wow. he knows he heard God's voice. Yeah. Um, I, I detect more of a leading of my spirit, and like yeah. you so poignantly said at the open, the voice of the Lord will never direct us away from Scripture. Is what we're detecting, the leading we're feeling, lining up with the Word of God. Yeah, yeah that's the voice of the Lord. Absolutely. So when you, because, you know, we pray on this show. I don't know if you guys know that. But we definitely pray. And we, we get words of knowledge, which is ultimately just hearing from the Lord about somebody. When you get that, what is it? Is it, a, is it an audible voice? Is it a feeling? Like, what is that like for you? Well, I've prayed a lot about that because mm -hmm. it's a very, it's an honor Mm -hmm. to be a part of that, to be praying for yeah. other people. And, and months into years, I've been saying, Lord, if you've got a word I can give somebody, yeah. please speak it to me. So ahead of our program, I will pray, Lord, let my ears be open to what you have to say. Yeah. And even just yesterday, I got a very encouraging email from a, a viewer. Someone on YouTube said they heard a word a couple of days ago on the program. It was for them. Wow. It's so wonderful to know that God is speaking yes. to people. So I will pray, Lord, give me something That's for right. somebody. And yeah. I want to be just knowing I'm hearing from God. Yeah. And it's it's a leading in my spirit, in my mind, and um, it's not an audible voice, but, but it's, I- It's something other than yourself. Would yes. you say that? Yes. Okay, I totally, I'm, I'm right there with you. And that's, I think that's such a great prayer to pray. Lord, reveal yourself to me. Lord, open my spiritual eyes, open yeah. my spiritual ears, enlighten the eyes of my heart so that I can hear from you. And then also going above that and saying, God, if you have something for somebody, tell me what it is and then be obedient to that and share. One of my so. favorite stories growing up was when Samuel was a young boy, the prophet Samuel who anointed David. 
and he was uh, near Eli sleeping, and, mm -hmm. and he heard Samuel. Yeah. Samuel. And he kept going to Eli, you call me, you call me, and Eli finally said, no. The next time you hear that voice say, your servant is listening, Lord, mm. speak to me. That's a good prayer for us too. Yeah, so I hope we answered absolutely. that question mm -hmm. well. It's a very, um, it can be a very personal thing. Mm -hmm. What is universal is scripture, the word of yes, God. Yes, absolutely. We'll speak to you. Absolutely. If you'd like to ask a question or give us a topic to talk about, go to our social media pages to let us know. You can look for posts on Facebook, Instagram, also have a YouTube page you can visit, and we would love to hear from you. Like a never-ending hamster wheel is how Eric Baker described his life. The harder he worked, the more money that he owed. He soon wondered, was there any way out? Take a look at what he found. Eric Baker is a successful network engineer who works with multinational banking and financial services firms. But a few years ago, he could barely keep his head above water. I had a bill from the IRS that was like maybe $35,000, $40,000 at one point. Um, there was student loans. There was a car loan. Altogether, Eric owed over $100,000 and was doing all he could just to make minimum payments. Well, it's, it's depressing, right? It, it makes you feel as if you're working just to survive. You know, you don't really have any real purpose. It's just to pay the bills and just to survive and just enough to get to the next check. You know, it's this never-ending hamster wheel that you're on. One day while channel surfing, Eric landed on the 700 Club. You know, they were talking about my situation it was just, you know, my ear, my spiritual ear is perked up. Eric prayed with Gordon and received Christ as his savior. From that point on, his life took a new turn. I developed a hunger for God. I wanted to know more about him. So I started to just read the word. And, and this is something that I've never done before. I mean, I would read the Bible, but it was always like a chore. It was work, it felt like work. As Eric grew in his newfound faith, he continued to reach out to CBN for help. I called the number, and someone prayed with me over the phone, and I just felt so encouraged. CBN was there for me when I needed help the most. I didn't have any other lifeline. I didn't have anyone else to talk to. And these people, three, four in the morning, these people were on the phone. And they're talking to me, and they're praying with me, they're encouraging me. You know, this, this is, um, where else is she going to get something like that? The change in Eric was so noticeable, even his boss mentioned it during his next performance review. He says, Eric, you are an indispensable part of this team. He says, he says you know, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. As Eric learned more about God, he started giving. He also became a CBN partner and soon increased his giving. He says it wasn't long before he started seeing results. When I started to tithe more, I saw more of his faithfulness. I got a, a almost $20,000 bonus. And this was like just a few weeks after I started tithing more. I got a raise. After receiving that 12% raise and bonus, Eric was able to get back on track financially. He began paying down his debts and today he's almost completely debt free. He still supports CBN and encourages others to give back to God. It's a gift. Tithing is a gift to us. It, it intensifies our faith in God and you really get the opportunity to see him in action. Taste the Lord and see that he's good. You know, you have to, you have to step out in faith. I so appreciate Eric and his story. I mean, it's not easy to open up like that about the loneliness he had and the hopelessness and even the fact he talked about the debt he had. And for those of us who have been in debt, we know it can be very discouraging sometimes to feel hopeless. How am I going to get out of this mess that has uh, I've created? You know, Eric said, I'm going to trust God in this. You know, so often we trust God with, with our eternity, right? We're going to spend eternity with God. We trust him with our day-to-day -day decisions and... Uh, trying to be obedient. But sometimes we have a tendency to say, Lord, my money is off limits to you. This is something I know better than you. I know how to steward this better than you. Even if I'm in debt, this is my area. Frankly, sometimes we're too fearful to surrender even just a little bit God asked for to him. 
But what Eric realized, and what we see through that story is, it wasn't for God. God wanted Eric to tithe so he could bless Eric. And it's something that we benefit from as well as a form of worship. So don't feel hopeless if you're in debt. Maybe it's the day you surrender more of your wallet to the Lord, more of your life to the Lord and say, I've surrendered in all these areas and now my finances is another area I'm gonna surrender to you, Lord. So if you're looking for a place to sow into the work of God, CBN's a great place to do it. I've been doing it for a lot of decades now. And the work CBN does around the world is a beautiful thing. You can call us at 800-700-7000 and just say, I want to join the 700 Club. When you do, we are going to send you Pat Robertson's new book called The Power of the Holy Spirit. And it will absolutely bless you with great insights into the Holy Spirit's work in your life and how he wants to work in your life. So just give us a call, 800-700-7000 and say, I'd like to join the 700 Club. Ashley? 11-year-old Adrian Nygaard was so sick, doctors encouraged his parents to make some memories with him before he was gone. Adrian was a fan of Bethel music, so the family flew from Norway to Redding, California to attend a conference at Bethel Church. What happened next is what Pastor Bill Johnson calls one of the three greatest miracles he's ever witnessed. When Adrian was five months and a half, the nurse advised us to start feeding him baby food, just to, to start the transition to solid food and to try out if he could even sleep better. He didn't respond well. He was in a lot of pain. He was screaming all through the night and all through the day. Um, he was sweating profusely. His clothes were soaked and he was spastic from the pain. My husband Thomas and I would take turns comforting him and, and carrying him all through the night. And each one of us could take maximum of, of 30 minutes. Uh, and then we would have to switch. Uh, you try to do everything for him, but you can't take away the pain. When they put him on IV nutrition, within two days he was pain free. And we realized that many of his symptoms were, were related to his digestive system. Through years, we stayed like 80 to 120 days a year in the hospital. He was very sick, so we expected him to die several times. My cries to God were, did you forget us? Are you busy somewhere? I would cry until I had no tears left. And there in the silence afterwards, he would come. We could very much feel his presence. I was upset to God because why? Why should I get a sick son and, uh, and so sick? Of course I was crying out to God and shouting to him. Uh, I think God is big enough to take my expression. His muscles would get weaker and then they would disappear. So he had some kind of progressive muscular disease, although we didn't know what caused it. He had epilepsy, he had tachycardia, he had a lot of problems that caused him to grow very, very weak. And at the age of 11, our doctor said, you've talked about going on a trip, just creating memories for you as a family to live on after he's gone. Now is your window of opportunity. Next year, you probably won't be able to and we knew next year we might not have him. We couldn't go to the, to the beach because of Adrian. We couldn't play in the sand. We couldn't go to a Disney park because he was too weak to go to everything and he just had to look at them and that was not fun for him. And we thought, well, we'd like to go to a conference, like a church conference. And that might sound weird, but we had never been able to go anywhere. But we thought, so what if we go to Bethel Church? Our kids just love their music. When we got to Bethel, Adrian leaned over and he said to me, Mom, now I know that whatever God has for me, that's what I want. I know he wants the best for me. And that was just great. Um, and then we went to a, a breakout session on, on healing. And at the end, they said, does anyone need a miracle? And he raised his hand and a young man stood next to Adrian. And he said, so what's wrong with you? And Adrian said, I can't eat. And he just prayed for Adrian, praying for new life in his stomach. And, 
and his digestive system, and, and off we went. And I asked Adrian, so did you sense anything? Did you feel any different? And I said, no, but it was a good experience. So for lunch, we went to a restaurant nearby because we, we just needed to eat before the next session. And we all ordered and Adrian said, can I have the breadstick to play with? And usually at home, we would always give him food on his plate for him to, to cut to pieces and to smell and just to be a part of the meal, basically. And all of a sudden, Adrian said, can I have another one? And we said, no, you already have one. And he said, not anymore. Yeah, I just ate it. I, it just happened. I have no idea why. I no idea how it tasted. I don't remember. All I remember is uh, my dad looked on his face when I told him. He was shocked and a little bit terrified. Will he be sick or is it get healed or how will this go? Just tiny, tiny amounts of watermelon that contains a lot of water was enough to, to make him very sick. So just the idea of him eating a breadstick, it was like, It was, it was unimaginable. So my husband and I started talking. Now what do we do? Do we take him to a hospital? And we thought, no, there's, it's no use. They don't know him here, you know? It's just too complicated to begin to explain everything. And we thought, well, we'll just have to observe. And he went to bed and everything was normal and we recognized something was different but we didn't know what. The next morning I tiptoed into his room to see if he was still alive. And I, I looked over in his bed and Thomas came and stood next to me. And there he was sleeping, rosy cheeked. And, and he was just fine. I woke up with my mom over me and I asked, when is breakfast? And it was just amazing. His healing didn't come with a manual. We didn't know how to do this. But honestly, we just couldn't stop him. He would eat everything. He would have burgers and fries and salads and, and pizzas and, and ice cream and everything. You know, it was just impossible to stop him. I had 12 years to catch up on. Within days from when he was healed, the muscles started growing back. He was changing right before our very eyes. When we came back to Norway, Adrian's doctors are saying, this cannot be explained medically. His physiotherapist says, this is a miracle from God. It just can't be anything else. It's a very strange feeling. When you have been through so many years, we're expecting him, he could die. And now he has the possibility to, to grow up, to get a family and to get, everything is possible for him now. That is amazing. I remember the very moment I was in a car and, and I realized that Adrian would have a future. And he had been healed for quite some time, but it, it just hit me that he will have a future. And I was just so grateful. You know, all those prayers that we th prayed throughout Adrian's life and his, his illness, I firmly believe that those kept him alive. He wasn't healed, but God kept him in his hand. I believe in the power of prayer and I believe in the power of God. I think nothing is impossible for God. Healing is on the Lord's heart. You know, that is, it is who He is. He's the creator, the life giver, the healer. I used to think that I know that God can heal, but I don't know if He wants to. And now I know He wants to. Wow, receive that today. Anyone who's watching right now who's going through something hard, whether it is a physical ailment you're dealing with and the symptoms are screaming loud because you're in pain and you're suffering or your loved one who's, who's watching somebody that you love go through something really hard and painful and they're suffering and it's hard for you Hear the words of that mother today. I know, I know God can heal because he is your healer. Jesus said that anything is possible 
if you just believe. And friend, we don't have to drum up faith. We don't have to be shouting and dancing around to drum up the faith to believe for healing. All we have to do is believe in Jesus. Believe in the finished work of the cross. It is by the stripes of Jesus Christ that you are healed. Not going to be, but you are healed. Hold on to that today. Anything is possible if you just believe. Faith as small as a mustard seed. Have you ever seen a mustard seed? It's really, really small. Faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains if you just believe. Don't look to anything else but Jesus. Scripture tells us that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Believe in Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus for whatever healing you need right now and receive the healing from Jesus. Gordon and I are going to, I mean, I'm sorry, Andrew and I are going to pray for you. So just hold on to that. And we just want to share some more answer to prayers. This is Jane on Instagram. She said, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer in 2013. Doctors said that I would need surgery to remove my thyroid and then have radiation treatment. I was scared. I didn't want to go through all of that. One night shortly after my diagnosis, I was praying and I heard the Lord say, do you trust me? If so, hand over everything to me. I did and trusted God that he would heal me. I went back for another scan and the cancer was gone. I believe the Lord healed me that night and I can't stop thinking. Do you trust me? Yeah. What a great, whatever the Lord asked me that. Here's another great report. Dan on YouTube said I was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2014. I had my prostate removed, went through a round of radiation. For a few years, my PSA levels were still high and the doctors were concerned the cancer was spreading. I prayed and believed alongside the people of my church that I was healed. I went in for a PET scan. There was no cancer. I've now been cancer free for three years. Praise the Lord. These praise reports are evidence of what God can do. We pray for you today earnestly that he will reveal himself to you and give you a miracle in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, Ashley and I come before you today on behalf of those hurting in the audience, those who need your touch or need your touch for a loved one, Father God. Now, for those in depression and discouragement, feeling absolutely hopeless, just feel the Holy Spirit saying, grab the sword of the Spirit. Get in the Word of God. The enemy will lie to you. He will steal from you and seek to destroy. You must listen to the right voice. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. Jesus wants to reveal himself to you through his Word. Thank you, Lord. And I just pray for anyone who is suffering uh, from cancer. They've got a diagnosis with cancer or there's a loved one that you know that has cancer. I believe the Lord is healing cancerous tumors and bodies right now. Receive that healing from the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll begin to feel heat all over your body. Claim that for your loved one right now in Jesus' name. You are healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. I believe uh, the Lord is healing somebody tumors in the lungs. That's all I, that's all I heard. Tumors in the lungs. If that is you, receive God's healing right now in Jesus name. Father God, help us to trust you completely. Uh, For those who are wanting miracles and wanting more of you, but are apprehensive about does, will Jesus accept me? Yes. Thank you, Lord God, that you sent Jesus because we are unworthy and the cross gives us fellowship with God. Thank you, Lord, for your love in Jesus' name, amen. We leave you with a scripture from Philippians chapter four, verse six. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Tomorrow on the program, Christine Kane is with us. We'll see you then. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.